Hello and welcome. Penny Stock Analysis is back with another session about uh, using different technical analysis tools and fundamental analysis tools to analyze stocks. So from pennystockanalysis.com, let us begin. If you are not familiar with fundamental analysis in regards to uh, shares, then uh, today will be a good starting point uh, taking a look at the two most commonly, or two of the most commonly used uh, ratios, and that is the earnings per share and the price to earnings ratio. Before using any type of analysis tools, you have to know what you're looking for and what you will be using it for. So the first thing we will look at today is the earnings per share and the purpose of this particular ratio is to figure out how much of a company's earnings is distributed per outstanding share. Put another way, if you own 10 shares, how much of the company's earnings do you own? And the equation to figure out this particular ratio is the net income of the company for a particular quarter or perhaps the year. You uh, subtract from that amount the dividends that are paid to shareholders and then that number is divided by all of the outstanding shares. And that will give you how much of the company's earnings are distributed per share that's owned by investors. What we will do here on this slide is walk you through a simple example of how to figure out the earnings per share of a company. So we're going to look at all the variables that were in the equation and here they are. So let's say a company's earnings is $100 million. Their preferred shares and the dividends paid on those is $20 million, and the outstanding shares owned by investors are $40 million. So if we take the net income which is $100 million minus the $20 million paid out in dividends to preferred shareholders, we're left with $80 million in net income. And if we divide that by 40 million outstanding shares, then what we have is that for every share that an investor owns, there's two dollars of the company's earnings. And what we want, if you're an investor, is to always have the earnings per share growth. That means that there's long-term sustainable business, there's long-term sustainable growth, and what's even more important is that it's steady because that means earnings are predictable, the business is predictable, and therefore you can make a more sound investment decision. As with all analysis tools, technical, fundamental, and so forth, there's always things that you need to be aware of when calculating these ratios in order for your analysis. One, in, in reference to earnings per share, which we are discussing today, not all EPS are created equally. So in other words, you have to understand that earnings are the result of accounting rules, whether it's GAAP or international accounting uh, standards. Uh, there's different calculations which are allowed, and there's certain discretions that are taken by company management and accountants in order to achieve a particular goal for that quarter. So if a CEO is a more short-term uh, concentrated, then they may uh, be more inclined to boost the EPS, perhaps artificially at the expense of long-term growth, or something along those lines, or perhaps certain gap rules don't allow them to account for things uh, properly if it's a new industry and gap rules haven't uh, changed in order to accommodate them. So not all EPS is created equally. Another thing to take into account is how much capital did it take to make the company earnings. If a company uses less capital to get a certain amount of earnings, it means it's more efficient. It means they have a higher return on their capital and their investments, which usually means it's running a more solid and better business. And of course, that's over the long term a better investment. The next common ratio that we would like to talk about today is the price to earnings ratio. And the purpose of this ratio is to, to, to determine how much money investors are currently paying for the earnings of a share in a company. 
In other words, how much is an investor willing to pay for one dollar of earnings of the company? And the equation, or how this ratio is determined, is by taking the current market price of the share and dividing it by the EPS, the earnings per share, which we have just previously learned how to calculate. So just as we had performed with the earnings per share example, we will be performing a price to earnings ratio example. Again, let's use the variables and define them. So a current price per share, let's say in this example, is that the current price is $20. And let's say we have already determined what the EPS is, and we have come to the conclusion that it's $2. So by doing that simple equation, current price over the earnings per share, we see that 20 divided by 2 equals a P-E ratio of 10. And now that P-E ratio of 10 is useful to you when it's compared to other P-E ratios within the company and specifically within the industry. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can do this using traili trailing P-E ratios, which look backwards in comparison, and forward-looking P-E ratios, which are looking into the future to try and predict what the growth is. So here are a couple of tips that all of you should keep in mind when calculating and using a price-to-earnings ratio. First, the current price of a stock has a very sizable and significant impact on the ratio. So don't try and determine the P-E ratio of a stock if it's trading very erratically up or down. Try and choose a, a period when it's more stable. That way you can have a more reliable ratio. Something that is more long-term, consistent, smoothed out. Something that is much more easily compared to, let's say, an industry standard. Another thing you want to do is when the P-E ratio is being used, again, as mentioned previously, it can be used trailing, which means using looking backwards a couple quarters, or you looking forward a couple of quarters. In other words, trying to predict the growth of the company. So the whole purpose of this is to, de to determine if the P-E ratio is going up or down. If it's going down, that may mean that people are willing to pay less for the earnings per share. And that can either mean the business is moving down or that investors still haven't realized the potential of the stock and that it's undervalued. Conversely, if the P-E ratio is going up, typically means that the price of the stock is going up. In other words, people are willing to pay a premium for the earnings of this company. However, if it's significantly above, let's say, the P-E ratio for all the companies in the industry, it may mean it's overvalued. So those are a couple of things to keep in mind. So during the course of this presentation, I know we have touched on the basics of the P-E ratio, which is price to earnings, and the earnings per share ratio, EPS. And in certain instances, we've even uh, gone a little deeper into the definitions and use. However, on the whole, here's some things that I would like to impart with you. First, remember that both the P-E ratio and the EPS are best used for comparisons to past quarters, earnings for a company, or looking forward to determine if there is growth. Another thing that is very useful for both of them is comparing one company to another company in the same industry. Tech companies, because of their high growth nature, will always have a higher P-E ratio of like 99% of the time than, let's say, a utilities company, which provides power for people. So that's why, remember, looking at a company, keep it with, when comparing these ratios, remember to look at within the company numbers and the industry. Looking at other things is just comparing apples to oranges, and we'll give you a very uh, good read on anything. A growing EPS is usually a sign of long-term company growth. That's great news for you. It means the company is really earning money on their cash and their investments. And a growing P-E ratio means investors are willing to pay more for future growth. In other words, it typically means the price of the stock is going up. However, just because it's low, 
lower than past quarters or lower than an industry it doesn't mean the business is bad it just means that perhaps investors haven't figured out the potential of this company and that means it's undervalued which means you can purchase it at a discount which means you can make more money so we have covered uh, a couple of very common topics that all investors should know of especially when looking at fundamental analysis of stocks and uh, we've touched upon many things to watch out for, what it's used for, and how it's best used. So without uh, much further ado, stay tuned for our next PennyStockAnalysis.com uh, video. It'll be uh, packed with uh, educational material as always, and we look forward to talking to you then from PennyStockAnalysis and PennyStockAnalysis.com. Invest wisely.